Hey guys, so in this video uh, we're going to do three examples of computing limits algebraically uh, with the factoring method. So again, the first thing you should always try is direct substitution, and if that doesn't work, uh, then there are some other things you'll have to try, uh, and this is one of them. So example one here, uh, limit as x approaches 3 of x squared minus 9 divided by x minus 3. So let's try direct substitution and see what happens. Well, if we do that on the top, uh, 3 squared is 9, minus 9 is 0, so we have 0 on top. Okay, that's okay so far. What happens on the bottom? Uh, 3 minus 3 is 0, and that's bad. Uh, you can never ever divide by 0, no matter what's on the top, even if it's also 0. So this makes us sad for now. Um, but let's try something else. Uh, because we have 0 over 0, uh, that usually indicates that there's something that could be factored here or canceled. Um, that's not always true. And if that's not the case, then there's something else we could try, but we'll talk about that later. So for now, let's see if factoring works. So how do we go about using that? Well, uh, this limit is going to equal the limit as x approaches 3. Of how do we factor this now? So on the top, we have x squared minus 9. That's a difference of squares. So that's going to factor as x minus 3 times x plus 3. And then on the bottom, we just have x minus 3 still there. All right, so now we see uh, there's a common factor of x minus 3 that could be canceled. So let's go ahead and do that. All right. So then this uh, simplifies to limits as x approaches 3 of uh, x plus 3. That's all that's left here. Okay. And now here we can just do uh, straight up direct substitution, uh, nothing too complicated or tricky here. Just uh, replace this x with a 3 here, and then we'll have 3 plus 3, which is of course 6. And that's our answer for example 1. Alright, so let's go ahead and uh, erase this and we'll do example 2. So example two, a little more complicated, but it's the same idea. So now let's take the limits as x approaches negative four of x plus four over three x squared minus 48. So what happens if we try direct substitution? Remember, it's always the first thing we should try, direct substitution, but what's gonna happen? Um, we're going to get, on the top we have negative 4 plus 4 is 0. All right. What happens on the bottom? Uh, negative 4 squared is 16. 16 times 3 is 48. Minus 48 is 0. So again, we have 0 over 0. So, sad face. Um, but let's go ahead and try factoring, because we have 0 over 0. So maybe there's something that uh, can be factored and canceled here. So let's uh, do that, see what we get. Well, this is going to equal the limit as x goes to negative 4 of x plus 4 over what happens on the bottom. Well, here there's a common factor of 3 first that we can pull out. So that's going to be 3 times what's left, x squared minus 16. Okay. So this 3 here, we can actually pull it out of the whole limit because it's just a constant. It's really the constant 1 3rd. Because um, the 3's on the bottom, this is like multiplying this whole thing by 1 third. So we can pull that out, and what we're going to have is 1 third times the limit as x approaches negative 4 of what's left. Well, we still have x plus 4 left in here. Now, how about uh, this? We still have x squared minus 16, but can that be factored? Yeah, again, it's a difference of squares, so that's going to be x minus 4 times x plus 4. All right, so now we have a common factor of x plus 4 that's going to cancel. So cancel, cancel. And what we're left with is 1 third times the limits as x goes to negative 4 of 1 over x minus 4. Okay, when we canceled everything on the top here, we were left with just a 1. So that's still there. Um, all right, so now we can do direct substitution. So when we do that, we're still going to have this one third just kind of hanging out, the, uh, hanging out around there, doing nothing. And then times what? Uh, replace this x with this negative 4. And then we're going to have 1 over negative 4 minus 4, which is 1 over negative 8. 
So 1 over 3 times 1 over negative 8 is 1 over negative 24. Or in other words, negative 1 over 24. And that's our answer for example 2. Alright, so let's go ahead and do example 3 now. So example 3 is going to look a little more complicated, uh, but the idea is going to be the same. Alright, so example 3, uh, let's take the limits as x approaches 4 of x minus 4 divided by the square root of x minus 2. A little strained, right? But what happens if we try direct substitution? Well, if we do it on the top, what do we get? Uh, substitute this 4 into this x, and we have 4 minus 4 is 0. What happens on the bottom? Uh, put the 4 into this x, we have square root of 4 is 2, and then 2 minus 2 is 0. So again, we have 0 over 0. Sad face. Um, but because we have 0 over 0, that means there's probably something that we can factor. So what can we factor out of this? It looks kind of weird, right? Not really something we're used to factoring. But let's uh, come over here for a sec, and let's take a look at this. Uh, remember, x squared minus 4 equals x minus 2 times x plus 2, right, to difference of squares. Well, let's take a look at x minus 4, okay, uh, rather x minus 4 instead of x squared minus 4. So can we factor this into something here? Okay, so the only thing that's different now is instead of x squared, we have x, okay? The minus 4 is still the same, so we're probably still going to have minus 2 and plus 2, but what's going to go in here? Well, here was x squared, and then this was x and x. Okay, when you multiply the x's together, you get x squared. Okay, what can you multiply? So here, multiply x by itself to get x squared. What can you multiply by itself to get x? Well, if you multiply the square root of x by itself, then you get x. So maybe this is true here. Square root of x minus 2 times square root of x plus 2 equals x minus 4. And if you were to FOIL this out, uh, first, outer, inner, last, if you were to FOIL it out, you would get x minus 4. So this is how you can factor uh, x minus 4, like this. So let's go ahead and try that with this example and see if that gets us anywhere. All right, so this is going to equal... Uh, limits as x approaches 4 of, so the top here factors into root x minus 2 times root x plus 2. All right, and all of that's still being divided by the square root of x and then minus 2. So when you write this, uh, make sure that you're careful about ending the square root sign before the minus 2, because uh, the minus 2 and the plus 2 here, those are outside of the radical signs. So make sure that the radical sign is only over the x. All right. so anyway, um, root x minus 2 on top, root x minus 2 on the bottom. So these factors are going to cancel. And what we're left with is the limit as x approaches 4 of the square root of x plus 2, like so. All right, so now we can just do direct substitution. Uh, if we substitute this 4 into this x, we have the square root of 4, which is 2 and then plus 2. So let's go ahead and write all that. This is a square root of 4 plus 2. Alright, square root of 4 is 2, plus 2 is 4. So 4 is our final answer for example 3. Now if you don't like this factoring method here, um, this is kind of goofy, so if you're not used to it, you don't like doing that, that's fine. There is another way to do this kind of problem, and we'll actually come back to this example uh, in a later video and see another way to do it. But for now, uh, factoring will work, so if you prefer that method, that's totally fine.